You're listening to the Modern Healthcare Back Office, a podcast dedicated to solving the billing issues and gridlock facing the healthcare industry, presented by ProChamp, hosted by Chuck Ellis and Rachel Schools. All right, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to give everyone a few minutes to pile in here, but... We are very excited to have you joining us today. I am Chuck. I am the marketing director here at ProChant. And while we are getting folks filing in, I wanted to remind everyone that we have a podcast that's starting now. We've got six or seven episodes up now called the Modern Healthcare Back Office. And it's all about the uh, ins and outs, the common pitfalls and performance issues that come from running a home-based care or healthcare-based business. Right now, it's mostly about HME, DME, and some infusion pharmacy content, but we're looking to expand that. If you're looking for just a nice 15, 20-minute way to improve your back office efficiency, we got a lot of really cool experts that we're having on and answering questions. So that's a exciting thing for us that we're happy to be sharing. If you go to the ProChant YouTube channel or you check out your favorite podcast app and you type in the modern healthcare back office. I know that's a lot of words, but uh, we cover a lot of ground. So it needed a long title. I'm going to turn things over to Joey Graham. He is our chief revenue officer here at ProChant. And we're going to be talking about this really interesting topic that we've had come up time and time again here at ProChant. And that's picking the right billing system for your business. Because while we would love to work with you. There, there are certainly some finer points to figuring out how that system works and what system works best for your business. And Joey's going to be sharing his experience when it comes to businesses of all sizes in especially HME and DME and what he's experienced works best for them. So Joey, I'm going to turn it over to you. Take it away. Great. Thanks, Chuck. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Very excited to be presenting on this interesting topic. This is definitely something we get asked a lot here at ProChant. So we decided to go ahead and put together a little presentation and put together some thoughts in terms of how you should go about evaluating this decision. A little bit about me. I am the Chief Revenue Officer here at ProChant. I've been in the industry for about 20 years now. I started out as an HME service technician and worked my way up over the years. One time I was a consultant with Braytree traveling the country, working with providers and implementing the software and solving business. Uh, challenges, but I've worked with all the major systems in the industry when they all have their pros and their cons, and there's really no one size fits all solution I would say out there. But yeah, I've been in the industry about 20 years and very excited to be talking to you guys today about this topic. Today's agenda, we want to keep today's webinar short for you, probably no more than 30 minutes. Want to just make sure you guys are able to get a good lunch in there as well. Today's agenda is first, we're going to talk about when is the right time to start looking for a new system. Then we're going to talk about the most important features and benefits to really consider when you're looking at those systems. We're going to talk about your selection process and what should that look like? How long should it take? What are some of the things you should ask about? And then finally, a final decision. What are some do's and don'ts when you're finally ready to make that decision? And certainly this is one of the most important decisions that, that modern suppliers and providers face is, is my current billing system or EMR supporting my needs? Should I evaluate alternatives out there? And certainly we've all seen there's been consolidation throughout the healthcare industry and the software providers, the healthcare providers, but there are still many legitimate and strong options for you to consider when you're looking at the software market and deciding what makes the most sense for your business. I wanna mention that the content for this presentation actually started as a panel presentation or a panel discussion that I did with several providers that I moderated. And these were providers who had recently chosen new software. Each one of them had picked a different software and they talked about what it was it that, what was their selection process? What was it that drove that decision? And we made it a very interactive session. And this, I think we presented at MedTrade a couple of times. So that's where a lot of these ideas came from. These are not necessarily from me specifically. And one other thing I want to say is the purpose of this presentation is not to pitch any specific billing system. So you'll notice I'm not going to talk about specific billing systems. I'm going to talk about uh, features that many of these systems have that you should be on the lookout for. And certainly if you have questions about specific billing systems, I'm happy to reach out to you directly. So first let's get right into it. When is the right time to start? When's the right time to start looking at a new billing system for your business? The first thing you want to say is sometimes it's not the right time. 
right? You really need to make sure it is the right time and that you have the resources allocated that you need to be successful. And when I say resources, not only money, but time, this is going to take a lot of time, a lot of time of your senior leadership, your managers, inventory operations, revenue cycle. This is going to be very disruptive to your business. So it, make sure that we're not in a situation where cash is tight and we're not, we're hardly making payroll or we're struggling in terms of cash flow. There's always bumps in the road, always bumps in the road. It, no matter what anybody tells you, there's always bumps in the road. You have an established ecosystem now that's going, you have payer connections set up, they work. You're not experiencing issues typically, right? And so when you disrupt that and you move to a new billing system, it's got a whole different clearing house. It's got a whole different connections to your payers and the ways that these bills are going to be generated. Um, you're looking at conversion, converting data, converting your rentals, all these things. It's never a hundred percent smooth. So you have to make sure that you budget for that. You will make up for it, but you have to make sure you budget for that and that you understand there will be a time, a turbulent time when you first go live in the new system that you're having to work out bugs. You're having to work out kinks. This payer wasn't set up right. The pricing wasn't set right on this. You know, all these things are going to happen. They're going to have, they're going to cause little ripple effects. So you got to make sure that you're, you've got that little war chest sitting there ready to go. Not a huge war chest, but a little war chest. You don't want to be in a situation where you, a, a small disruption to cash flow is going to have a major impact to your ability to run your business. The other thing is if you're really having some staffing challenges and everybody's having staffing challenges, but what I mean is the thought leadership side of your business, the people who understand how data flows, how an order goes from a referral to, you know, a chin the bay, those people need to have capacity. And I know they never do. You have to be able to give them capacity. You have to be able to shift some of the work off of them. You have to be able to deprioritize some things so that your key people can be heavily involved in this. You get out of an EMR or billing system, what you put into it. And if you take the time to truly set that thing up properly, it will serve you for years and years to come. And the opposite is just as true. If you just crash through the implementation, do the bare minimum, don't really pay attention. Don't think about the long play. Then you're going to set yourself up for a long, rocky road. Once you get into this new system. So you've got to have that time. You've got to have that cash for it to make sense that now is the time to start. Also, when is it the time to start? When is the time right to start? So I have an old or antiquated system. Right. There are certain systems right now that are being sunset, meaning they're no longer being supported by the company that, that owns that, that software. And typically that's because there's a new uh, platform out there that they would prefer that you move over to supporting a billing system and keeping up with all the regulatory changes, the, the coding changes, all that stuff is it's a big investment. And there are a lot of systems out there still a whole lot of systems out there still. And some of them just really aren't getting the investment. They're not getting the new features. They're not keeping up. And so as a result, you're falling more and more behind because your pro your competitors are out there with the shiny new systems with all the bells and whistles. And meanwhile, you're struggling to print a CMN. So you got to make sure we don't have an old antiquated system. That's not supporting our business and that the current system, it's a bit, another reason to, to look is the. It's not supporting your business goals. It doesn't have workflow. It doesn't have document management the way you need it. It doesn't have the mobile component, the ability to do mobile delivery, and it doesn't have the connections. We're going to talk more about these things, but it used to work. It was a good system back when we got it, when we were smaller. And that actually takes us to our next point, which is the system doesn't support the size or scale of my business. I've grown. So I had this system. It worked great. But now it's just, it's not scaling up with my business. This could be just really tedious processes, getting your claims out the door and things like that. You just try to run a report. It takes five minutes, 10 minutes. Sometimes I've heard providers, it'll take an hour or two for a report to run. And there are some systems where the system just locks up while it's running the report. You can't do anything. All those sort of things, like that's just not supporting your business. You should be able to get a report right away. And so now is the time to maybe start looking at, should we get a new billing system? Last thought on when is the right time to start? Lack of integration points. This is one of the number one things right now today for providers who are in the market looking for new software. 
they need systems that interface with other systems, right? That's really important. We can't be locked in our own little environment where we have to manually enter everything coming in or out of that. Does it integrate with my doc management? Does it integrate with my, my dropship vendors where I can send electronic purchase orders and pull back in those tracking numbers and pull back in that proof of delivery and reorder automatically. But does it integrate with the e-referral platforms? And do I have the ability to pull in referrals and pull in documents from the facts into my workflow? Those sort of things. It's really important. And I think as, as we watch healthcare grow and evolve and watch the technology landscape, this is becoming more and more important. So you need systems that connect to each other. So you're not managing multiple databases, having to maintain the same patient record in multiple databases, and that you've got everything put together in such a way that you don't have to re rely on and remember people that people have to remember to do things. People have to remember to enter this information here or take this step. Otherwise the whole chain breaks apart. So this is all the time when it's, when should we start looking for a new system? So now that we're interested, we need to look at a new system. Let's talk about some of the most important features and benefits for this new system. And one of the first things you have to really come to terms with is, uh, am I okay with SaaS? Do I have a SaaS vision or do I need to go on premise? So this is sometimes out of your hands, right? If you're with a large hospital system, for example, or a health system, it could be that they will not allow a SaaS platform. They just, they don't trust it. SaaS means this is software that's, that lives out in, on the internet, in the clouds. If you access it through a web browser. That's a typical SaaS platform, right? And then you have on-premises platforms, which you can buy your own servers and you can install it and you don't ever have to even connect it to the internet if you don't want to, right? Now that then everybody has to at some point, cause you got to send your claims and things, but still with an on-prem, then you can really batten down the hatches and keep it super secure. That's not to say that SaaS platforms aren't secure, but it's risk is a spectrum. Right. And there are certain health systems and certain providers who really don't feel comfortable with their data, with their PHI being out on the, so that's going to be one major decision point and whichever path you choose is going to wipe out about half of your choices. So that if this is that important, and if it's not that important, then let's move on. But certainly that's a one to start with. And another thing I would point out is the availability of custom programming. So is your new, is the new software vendor that you're going to work with, is that even important to you? Now, there are some providers who really need custom programming and they need a software vendor that's going to support their custom programming as the versions roll on, as the years move on. This programming that you created that's special to your business is being maintained. So there are certain companies who are willing to do that. There are some who are not, and there's different schools of thought as to why they will or won't do that. Some who won't do that feel that any, so any kind of custom programming needs to fit a larger need than just one provider. Often it does. Often you need this little piece of custom programming for you, but in reality, most other providers need that too. They just don't really realize it. So they may put that in their roadmap. They may work on that over time, but they're not going to necessarily make it just for you. And there are others, as you get larger, you truly need custom programming, especially when it comes to those interfaces and you have other systems like NetSuite or SAP or Oracle, and you've got to get those connected to your ERP here or your, your EMR, your billing system, then that may require some custom programming. So anyways, that's going to be another important feature to consider. And again, which, whichever one, if you decide you do need, that's going to wipe out a lot of your choices. Other important features and benefits, of course, are the APIs and the integration points. That's what we were talking about earlier. API is an application programming interface, but it's, it basically just means when you are, when you have two systems that talk to one another and they're able to push data in and out of each other. So having those available is great. And then most software providers will tell you that they have them. I think this is one area where the devil is really in the details. When it comes down to that actual API interface, what specific fields are you able to modify? Um, you'll find that a lot of fields are one way where you can pull down the value, but you can't change it. You can't push back into the system. So it truly is a devil's in the details sort of thing there. So if it's, if APIs are really important to you as a decision point, then you really want to dig into the weeds of that and pull in some of your development people to talk to the provider and get the API actually listing and really determine, is this going to mean that we're going to have for using these APIs automation. 
So automation is huge, right? There's certain systems who this is how they got on the map is through automation, automating things like the daily billing process where the claims just go out the door automatically now, where that's now become table stakes for the main play. In the past, that was huge. Other key pieces of automation you want to make sure to look for are things like automated eligibility checks, especially automated eligibility checks on those re-rentals. That's really important for your ability to proactively manage, let's say your Medicaid patients, you want to have those automated eligibility checks. So there's a lot of places where automation comes into play when you're looking at these providers or these different software vendors. And of course, you always have the option to automate outside as well, using your own systems, your own coding or bots or whatever your strategy is for automation. But then it's going to be about, is this a good system for me to build that infrastructure around? But automation is key. And there are many providers now who this is really all they care about is how much can I automate? How much can I set this workflow up so that I have humans working it by exception? And otherwise the work just moves through the queues automatically, which is a great lead into workflow management. Really good, strong workflow management is critical right now. So this is how you are able to move away from the printer and people's desks and inboxes and all that stuff to an actual workflow where you know where the work lives. You know who has how much, what the value of that work is, how long it's been there. You are able to manage it by the workflow state. And so this much is stuck in intake, this much is stuck in eligibility, this much is stuck in authorization. This much is out for delivery. This much is pending confirmation. You should have clear visibility on all that with each of those buckets aged out. So you can quickly identify the stuff that's sitting out there for too long and not moving through your workflow. So having a billing system or EMR that has built in workflow capabilities or that integrates with a strong workflow system will be critical for your success. And it's really important that it's not just workflow states of a specific entity in the database, it's document centric. So the documents have to flow with the work because as we all know, this is all about documents. You've got your order, your medical records, your proof of delivery, your assignment of benefits, all these things you have to get signed, all these documents you have to have in case you get audited. That is a big part of that workflow. So you got to make sure the documents are part of the workflow when you're evaluating that. More important features of benefits, uh, data access and reporting. How easy is it for you to get data out of this system to report on that data? That's critical, right? We talked earlier about waiting five, 10 minutes, sometimes hours for a report to run. Well, that's not acceptable, but sometimes you'll run a report out of a system and the output just doesn't make sense or you're not able to do anything with it in Excel or you don't have the ability to really turn that data into information that you can action on. So how easy is it for me to get at the data, access that data, get the reports I need to run my business? Their market knowledge and experience, it speaks to their, if I'm a specialty provider, there are certain specialty systems that I should probably look at because they've built this system for somebody just like me. For instance, there are specialty systems for complex rehab, specialty systems for orthotics. So different specific niches, there may be a specialty system. And if that's what you do and that's all you do, then working with somebody like them is probably going to give you some really nice features that, that the other systems don't have because they're maybe set up for a different type of provider. Uh, the implementation, training, and community support is also critical. How much support are you going to get from that provider, that vendor in implementing that system, getting your team trained? And then community support is, is there a, an active, thriving user community out there that you're going to be able to tap into and ask your questions? Or when you go to hire, are you, how easy will it be to find people that know your system? So. Those are all things to think about. And then finally, the scalability of the system again. So is it going to, as I grow, especially if I'm looking to become quite large, is this system going to grow with me or is it going to become tedious to manage? So now we move to the selection process. Length of time for the selection is typically about six months. Now, some providers, it could take as long as two years, but I would say on average, about six months for a, a you decide today, all right, we're going to, we're going to pick a new system. It's going to take about six months typically to get through that full selection process. You want to, you don't want to rush it. You want to make sure that you allow time for it to develop. Some providers will go through an RFP process or a request for proposal. Even if you don't typically do that, you want to think about this like that because 
what that's going to make you do is put your ducks in a row as to what's important to you. What are the things that you absolutely need uh, for this to be successful? And that way, when you go to, to target these vendors and go ahead and set up a demo, you're able to say, these are the things that are really important to me. And that way you can very quickly figure out any that are not going to be a fit. So identify those critical functions to quickly eliminate the systems that don't conform. You want to engage all the major vendors that you can who do conform because it's all about the comparison. It's all about understanding your different options and they're all a little different. And so to really understand what is available, you want to make sure you engage multiple vendors. You definitely don't want to go down a one vendor path and think about, is this a vendor I see myself as a long-term business partner with? The one of the providers in that panel I talked about earlier mentioned once they had selected the system or they had actually shortlisted, I think two systems, they actually went out and asked to see those systems in action, basically to go actually go visit a customer site, spend a few hours, actually see how that system works. Maybe talk to some people on the floor to really see how is it going and is this, are they really happy with it? Um, you have to remember that software demo you get is just the pure happy path. It does, if, if everything goes smoothly and that's what you're seeing, what you're not seeing is the reality of the situation, which as we all know, almost nothing follows the happy path. Almost everything has some weird thing about it and you have to do something a little different. And so to see some of that stuff in action, you know, there's no replacement for it. So there's definitely a recommendation to if you can try to see it in action. And lastly, in terms of the selection process, when it comes to the price, the price of that system, none of the providers we talked to felt that was a top three decision factor. In other words, none of them was like, I'm going to go with the cheapest one. I think every one of them felt that you get what you pay for. And I would have to, you don't necessarily want to go for the cheapest option out there. There's a reason for that. You may not want to go for the most expensive option either, but the price itself is certainly a decision factor, but it shouldn't be a top decision factor. I think is the point. So just making sure that you don't allow that to overshadow the rest of the process. You're buying a machine here that you're going to use for the next 10 years, right? So you're going to get your money out of it. Focus more on, is this going to meet the needs of my business? All right, so now it's time to make the final decision. Some do's and don'ts. Don't get stuck in paralysis by analysis. So do take your time. Definitely take your time. Take that six months, put them through the rare, do a site visit, do all that stuff. But then when it's time and you've shortlisted two or three of them, you know, pull the trigger on one, like just figure, and we're going to talk some other options here, but don't allow yourself to get stuck in that paralysis by analysis. I can't make a decision. I need more data. I need more data. At some point, sometimes it's best to just follow your gut. Seek some help though. Talk to your peers, talk to some consultants in the industry, talk to other industry insiders. So if you're a, like a member of EGM or another, another group, maybe your local state association or the go to med trade and talk to some providers there, visit the vendors at their booths and get demos there. Don't feel like you've got to go this alone. Every other provider has pretty much had to make this decision. So it's okay for you to go out there and just get their thoughts. Why'd they pick the one that they did? Which ones did they look at? They think about this other one. How important is this other thing? So all that stuff, right? But so go out there, seek some help, talk to consultants, peers, but make a decision. Be open to changing your processes. So don't let. The thing that kills the deal be, if we get this system, then we're going to have to change the way we do X. That never let that be the case. You will have to change your processes. So just open yourself up to that right now. When you get a new billing system, you're going to have to change some of your processes. You will never find a system that checks every single one of your boxes and that you're going to be able to configure to run just like your current system does. So that will never happen. So in fact, if you try to force that, then sometimes you will put yourself on a failure path where you end up just creating a mess. You don't realize it until a few years later when you're having to pay a consultant or somebody to come in and fix it. Last point here, this is not a small undertaking, as we just said, right? It's, it's going to take you six months. You got to make sure you've got the time. You've got to make sure you've got the money. Um, you don't want to cut corners on implementation and training. That's key. I've seen many providers do that. Uh, we've done it ourselves. Quick story. 
when we were implementing a CRM in our business, ProChan, we initially got Microsoft Dynamics, and which is a Microsoft solution. But we decided, you know what? We could just implement it ourselves. We're going to self-implement. We're just going to watch the videos. We're going to self-implement. Let me tell you that failed completely. It was not good. We did not have the time to do that. Eventually we realized where we were at, we decided to go ahead and get Salesforce. So that's what we use now for our CRM and Salesforce. But with Salesforce, we paid for a full implementation. We hired consultants, we went all in and now our Salesforce is working for us. It's supporting us. It's giving us what we need. It was hundred percent, the right decision. That's what I said at the very beginning, what you get out of the system is going to be what you put into it. And you want to put a lot into it at the beginning. You really want to put a lot of thought, a lot of time, higher help, but don't cut corners on the implementation. One provider said they've never seen someone buy too many trading hours. Thank you guys so much for having me. I appreciate your time today. Hey everybody, thank you again so much for joining us. If you have any questions, you can always email Joey G at ProChant.com. And Joey is always happy to answer questions. You can find him on LinkedIn as well. We also have, like I mentioned earlier, our podcast that is available now. We will be dropping another episode of that tomorrow, and that is answering all things back office when it comes to HME, DME, and infusion pharmacy billing. Be sure to check that out. Again, thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions about future webinars, you can always go to our resources tab at ProChant.com and sign up for our email updates, and you'll be first to know when there is a new webinar available. So again, thank you so much for joining us and hanging out with us today. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Modern Healthcare Back Office, a presentation of ProChant, a wholly owned revenue cycle management service dedicated to serving HME, pharmacy infusion, and other healthcare providers. Learn more about us at ProChant.com.